Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. This session, we are going to discuss and talk about the new soft capability. So let's jump on to the you know, tra- you know, session. So we'll start with creating a trial account. You'll get a 30 days free trial account on any point newsoft.com site. Okay, so just you go to this site and start creating you know, your account. So you go to the sign up, provide your information, and then say accept and create account. You'll get you know, your trial account created. So you log into your account, you'll see this page. Okay, so this page has all the services provided by your AnyPoint platform. So AnyPoint platform is nothing but a complete iPod solution. Why I'm saying complete? Because once you have this license, you don't need to buy anything. Okay, so let's start with the you know capabilities of the new soft. So it, as I said, it's a complete solution. Okay, and it's a complete cloud-based solution backed up by AWS, Amazon AWS. Okay. So let's first start with, you know, the, the whenever you get a requirement, you, you start designing it, okay? Then you publish it to your client and other developers. Then you start implementing. Once that uh, design part is approved by your client and your other developers, you can start implementing it. Once your implementation is done, you can test it. Once you are confident that as per your requirement, your implementation is working, you can deploy it to the cloud solution. We, we are going to talk about all these items in detail in this session, okay? So be with me, let's start with the each and every part. So design part we talked about, right? So there is a service called design center over here. Here we can design our flow as well as the API specification of our uh, implementation, okay? So first you get, you get a requirement for API, you will design that in design center. So we'll jump onto that also, I'll show you how it looks, okay? Then we have exchange. So once you design a specification for your requirement, you'll publish it to the exchange. So exchange is nothing but a shop or we can say a repository where you publish your assets. So it can be a API specification, it can be a reusable components, it can be a connector, it can be a template, okay? So this is, you know, a shop where you can, you know, publish your assets or you can source control your code, okay? So everything, you can do it in the exchange. Then we have a tool called AnyPoint Studio. This is ID, desktop ID. You can download it from here and start implementing your, you know, API specification. So from exchange, you can demo your API to, you know, API how it works with the mock data to your other clients and your uh, developers from the other organization who are the you know contenders for the consumption of this API. So these are the three main components. Other than these components, once your, your API session is done, you publish it to Exchange, and then you implement it, you'll deploy that implementation to your cloud up. So cloud up is nothing but, you know, it's IPAS solution backed up by the AWS, where you get an instance, okay? You see two instance where your implementation will be running. So that comes in the runtime management. So this is a place where you'll monitor your implementation. Then once your implementation is deployed over here, you can apply non functional requirement by using API managers. Okay, so you want to apply SLAs, you want to apply, you know, uh, rate limiting policies, you want to apply client ID enforcement policies, all those things, non functional requirement, you can, uh, you know, cover it on API manager. Then comes the access manager where you can control which API will be accessed by which, uh, you know, uh, client or which user. That controlling part you can, you know, monitor from the, or you can handle it from the access manager. Then we talked about API manager, runtime manager, and access manager. We are going to see each and every item in detail, okay? So be with me, okay? So secret manager, it stores your public keys, SSL-related uh, information like key store, trust store. Monitoring section, once your deployment is done and it, all the non feature requirements are applied on your implementation, okay, then you'll monitor. You will see how the performance of your API, whether the SLAs are getting, you know, uh, followed or not. Whether, uh, you know, if anybody is breaking those SLS, you will be monitored from here. Visualizer is the service where you can see your complete application network. So you, you, you must be having multiple APIs. How those APIs are connected with each other? What level we have? So if you know a little bit about MuleSoft, MuleSoft follows the API electricity approach where you'll be having three layers. Experience layer, process layer, and system layer. If you try to match this with the Java world, exactly MVC pattern, okay? So controller is nothing but your process API. Model is nothing but your system API and BB is nothing but your experience API. Okay, so this new sort is also based on the Java Spring framework. So that's from where this API led connectivity also you know inherited. But this API led connectivity also gives you a flexibility to reuse all the APIs which you are already implemented. That is also in you know, a goal of the new sort. Whatever you are producing, that has to be consumed as much as possible. Okay, so let's see. Let's start with the design center. Okay, so. Once you click on start designing, so let's take one requirement. Uh, so I'll take a requirement of book API. Okay, so 
you know, I'll just say give me a book. Okay, so it will give me the books available in the library. Okay, so let's start with that uh, EPA session, simple EPA session. So I already written, let me, so to save the time, I'll explain how we can write our APA session in the design center. So there are two languages we can use. We can use the RML, that is a RESTful Modeling API language. Okay, and there is a OS language, Open API Specification. So formerly it was called as a Swagger. Okay, so there are two languages. I am comfortable with the RAML, but any point of time you can convert RAML to OS, OS to RAML. There is no restriction. Okay, there are external tools also available to convert. Okay, so let's start with this API. So if you see this design center, the center part is your canvas where you'll be writing your RML part, that is API Specification. RML is, you know, a, a type of YAML language, yet another uh, YAML language. If you are aware of Python, you will understand this code very easily. So see here, protocol at the root level, and then you need to apply indentation. Either you can apply space or you can apply the tab. And whatever comes after that with the one tab indentation, that will be a part of that uh, particular, uh, you know, uh, element which is at the root level. So protocols, uh, you know, so I have given the value HTTP. That means this API supports HTTP. Then you see version V1. Then types, okay. So I am defining the book data type over here. Okay. So what I am saying is, I have given the object name, and then I said there are properties in this object, book object. So I am saying ISBN is there, string type, title, book title is there. That is also string, and these are required items. And there, there is one more, uh, you know, element that is author ID, and this is also string. So this is how I define data type in the RAML language. Then, once my data type is fixed, I need to define my resource. Since I said I want the book API, so I need to define user-specific resources. So you see here, books, okay? So always try to apply plural word here. So books is the resource name, okay, with the forward slash and git. So these are the HTTP verbs. So, you know, I'm assuming that you're aware of HTTP verbs. So that is gate, post, put, patch, delete, all those things are HTTP verbs. And these are standard, okay, standard protocol. So once you are saying books, and then you need to define your, you know, uh, HTTP verb. So once you say get book, it will, you know, respond to the response. Okay, what will be the response? So you see here, I am saying book. Inside that, I have one invitation. Then inside that, I have another invitation. That means in in inside books, I have get. I can have post, put, and all that. Okay, but let's talk about the get right now. Okay, so once you hit the get method, you will see the response. You will see the, all the books available in the library, and this response will be having the HTTP code that is two zero one. So here also I'm assuming that you'll be aware of HTTP codes also, HTTP verb and HTTP code. Okay. So always get return C201 for success scenario. So we are assuming right now success scenario. Okay. So this is HTTP code and then there'll be a body. And body is type of JSON. Okay. And this body will be having array of books. Okay. So this will be an example. So this is a mock data. Will be mock data will be test our uh, you know books A API service. Then these books can, you know, this is right now I am saying give me all the books. Then you can go with the specific book also. With this ISBN number, I want a book. So you can say books, and inside the book, I have a URI parameter. Okay? This is also one more resource. So this is my one resource with get. Okay, this also URI uh, with the URI parameter. This is my another resource with the get method. Okay, so once I get to that, you will, it will be responded to the uh, 201. There will be a body, and it will be a single object. Okay, here there will be a real object, but here it will be a single object. Okay, and down if you see here, this is the shelf. Okay. So wherever your cursor is, based on that cursor position, this self will suggest you the options. Okay. So if I say tab over here, the options will get changed. So as I said, this is a YAML language. So it, it based on the indentation. So based on your cursor position and the indentation, it will show you the options. Now you see, I have written this YAML language. The right side, this will get automatic. This document will get generated automatically. Okay. So we don't need to write any documentation for our API specification. Okay. So this is our, this is our design center. In the left side, you see all the files. So whatever files you are going to generate or you know create as part of your API specification, those will be listed down here. So you can once your API specification is done, you can test it here itself with the help of mocking service. So this design center will be internally integrated with the mocking service and with the help of let's see. So I have here one resource called books. No, you'll be able to see that resource over here. Okay, and there is one more resource called books slash ISDN. That is one more resource. So let's test both the resource with the help. So you'll see here right option. Once you click on right option, this will, you know, back, back, you know, back end, the mocking service will be running. And with the mock data, you can test your service. See here, I'm able to see both the objects as part of gatebooks API endpoint, right? Let me go back and say other, this will be a right and pass some ISBN number and say send. You're able to see the 
in an output as a single book object okay now so i am assuming that this is what the client expected okay and then i published this to the exchange okay so i already published it exchange how to publish it exchange i'll show you here so with the asset version and the api version your you know uh, your uh, api will be you know uniquely identified okay so asset version and api version and your uh, you know business group id with this this api will be uniquely identified on the exchange okay so i already published it so let's go to the exchange and see there okay so let's jump on to the exchange i will show you that let me go quickly to exchange yeah so as i told you i already published it to the exchange you can see here book restful api so if you click it here here also you will be able to test this okay with the mocking search so whatever we have seen design center you can see it that endpoint also over here and then you can test both both let's test it you can go here and you can see you are able to see this is the mocking service uh, you know it's uh, integrated with exchange also okay so you can say test so from here without implementing this api you can show the demo to your client okay that was as per your requirement i have written this api description and this will this will be your your output whether you are satisfied with this output or not so these are the parameters you can see it here example okay this is body right now i'm supporting only 201 you can add multiple uh, you know uh, status code over here okay then once this you, you show demo to your client and they are happy with your you know uh, demo then you can start implementing it so let me show you so this this exchange needs the credentials okay so there is an option to publish it for the external world so you can go to the share option and there is a public you can check this box and say save so this api specification will be available for the public okay outside uh, you know of your organization so if you go here let me show you so there is a public portal over here okay so if you go to public portal okay to so this link we don't need any credential so directly you know your client can go over here and he can see that okay this is a book rest api let me test it okay so they can go over here again you see here in the public portal also you'll be able to see the same ui okay you can add more information over here in real scenario you'll be adding more information over here what this api actually does okay so all that information will add here okay so once everybody is happy with your api specification you can start implementing it so where to implement i, I already, already told you you will use the let me show you so you will use the any point studio to implement it okay let me go to the any point studio i have already downloaded it and i am using 7.9 version okay so let me show you so here you can create new project you go to the file go to new project and inside the project you give your project name and here there is option to import it that api specification from the so import published api so we have published it to the exchange right so from here you can import that api so this is the credential you need to add it here okay and then you can search for the our api so we have book api over here right so it will show you that book api yeah book rest api you can drag it here and then you know install on your any point studio okay once you add it here you will get a project something like this okay exactly like this so let me call up all the you know proper so you'll get a this these are the minimum two flow you any how you'll get it main flow and console flow okay so we talked about the you know uh, you know mocking service right that mocking service is exactly the console flow over here and we said we have two resources right book and then books slash isbn right if you go here here right so let's say book we have only get method right now if you have get post and put right three method so you you see here with the books three flows okay for get for post and for put so the number of HTTP method inside your API and you those many flows will be able to see here. Okay, and main flow. Let me talk about the main. Flow. So for all those flows, whatever we have in our, you know, in our implementation, all those requests will be coming over here. So you will see only one HTTP listener over here. So if you see the configuration of HTTP listener over there, and this flow is automatically generated. Okay, we have not done anything. We have just imported from Exchange that API session. So all the calls will be coming to this listener. and this guy over here the api router this will divert all those requests to the respective flow whether it's a get books or get book isb so based on the request it will divert those calls to the respective flows okay so that is the responsibility of the api router in actual training we'll talk about this api router in detail okay so in the crits okay in nutshell we'll say that this is the router who is actually diverting all your calls to the uh, respective flow okay once this is done you will you know start implementing this okay so right now we are seeing only mock data this data will be actually coming from the database or some external system okay so right now we have mock data we are we are just hard coding over here so okay 
So now, once you implement it, your actual data will be coming from the database or somewhere else. Then you will deploy this code to the your uh, cloud up. Okay. So as I said, in any point platform, the cloud up you will monitor from the runtime manager. Okay. So let's see that. Okay. So let me go to the my any point studio and I'll deploy this. Okay. So before that, I need a few information. Okay. So just now I created this flow. I'll talk about that also. So just give me a second. I'll go and I'll go to the Inipment platform. Before that, I need to create an API instance over here. Okay, so to apply non functional requirement, we need to go to the API manager. We'll create an instance for our API. So we have exposed our API specific into the extension, right? From here, we'll, you can see that once I type it, it, it took some time. So now you select it. Okay, so automatically this asset type was RAML, the version V1, and my asset latest version is 1.0.2. Okay, then we there are two options we can go ahead with. Okay, in one option. So let's you know take the in point with proxy. Okay, so my deployment target is cloud up. We'll deploy it to cloud up. There are two options. Okay, we can, be, we can go with the basic endpoint as well as we can do the endpoint with the proxy. Okay, so let's go ahead here and then let me. Copy the mocking service here because we have not deployed actual implementation. So let me go here, and this is a public portal. So we'll copy this URL. Okay. So go back over here, paste. Okay. Just save it. Okay. Now you select the runtime. Right now we have our uh, latest runtime is 4.3.0, and we'll give a name. We'll say book. Okay. So if it is exists, just declare. So it will take some time. Now you can see it's deployed successfully. Okay, so let me recap what we have done. So we have created one proxy API for our mocking service. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. So now you can copy this URL. This is what your you know proxy URL. And if you go to the your browser and you can say slash, you can say books. See, you're able to see the two books object over here. Okay, so now this is now this is a proxy way. So there is other way also basic endpoint. So from your, you know, Anypoint Studio, this actual implementation will be deployed to the, you'll deploy it by with the help of API auto discovery. So in actual training, we'll show you how to do that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and apply some. So right now, without any security, we are able to access this URL. Okay. In actual scenario, we won't be having this kind of, uh, you know, flexibility to directly access our, you know, API. So as I said, let me go back again to my. A any point platform. So here we talked about the design center and we have seen how to write the section. We have seen exchange uh, where we have, you know, uh, executed our uh, API specimen with the help of mocking data and mocking service. And then we went to the any point studio where we have seen how to implement it and how many flows we get it. Now we are here a in API manager and the runtime manager. The runtime manager will be having your implementation business logic running. And then in API manager, you'll be applying the policy. So right now, we have created a proxy which is running inside our runtime manager. Let me show you that. Just now we have deployed it. The proxy, not the actual implementation. Okay. So let's go to the sandbox. To sandbox your environment. Now over here you see books proxy API. Okay. So just now we have deployed it. Okay. You can see here. So not this one. This one. Book proxy API. Okay. Now this proxy API we are accessing with the help of this URL. But now what I wanted to do, I want to apply some policies over here. So we'll go to the API manager. Okay. So in the same tool, that's why we are calling this any point platform as a complete integration tool because without, you know, you know, we are not going outside of this tool and having other extra tools and with the help of that tool, we, we, we implement something. No, we have implemented everything over here and we are managing that API over here and then we'll monitor from here. Itself. Okay. So now let's go. So we have book rest tool API. You can see over here. Now, just select this V1 and 
You can see this is the proxy URL. And right now, there are no policies over here. So now, we are going to apply the policy that is non functional requirement. So we'll go ahead and we'll apply the client ID and enforcement. So we'll take the latest version 1.2.3, configure it. Okay, whatever default is there, you just keep it as it is. So it's saying that your client ID will be coming as a as a part of header and your client secret also will be coming as a part of header. So right now we are accessing directly. So let me try to access from the uh, postman. So if I go over here and if I say paste this URL, get books, okay? So here without any credentials, you are able to access, okay? You can go and you can pass this one also. Let's say one, two, three, four. So single, right? With the single, uh, with the ISBN number, you get a single object. If you simply say book, okay, you'll get all the books. Right now we have only two books as a as part of mock data. Okay, now we'll see in the header part, if I pass, you know, you go here and we'll pass the client ID and then we'll pass the ticket, okay? So those values will pass it, okay? So before that, I, I, you know, apply the policy and we'll see that without passing this client ID, you won't be able to access this UN, uh, API. Okay, let's go to the API manager and say apply. Okay, so we are applying client ID enforcement policy on top of our API. Now, it will take some time, around uh, you know, 40 to 45 seconds to apply. Let's take it. It will take some time. Now you see that our policy is activated and now if you don't pass this, let me just uh, uncheck this guy. So you say that authentication denied means it is expecting client ID and client ID. So from where you'll get this client ID and client ID? Let me just quickly jump onto the internet platform again. So inside the platform, as I said, we are trying to use the access management. So we talked about design center, we talked about exchange, we talked about API manager, we talked about runtime manager. Now we'll talk about access management, okay? So from here, you'll be able to control the access over here, okay? Before that, I'll jump on to the, first we'll request for the access to our API. So where are our API? Our APIs are there in the exchange, okay? So from exchange only, people will be able to see the, your API, right? From there, they will request for the access. So if you go here, you'll see here, there are three dots. So there is an option called request access, okay? So who is, who is trying to access so, uh, you know, which, Instance, you will be selecting that instance and then create new application. We'll just say you know, trial, trial client. Okay, just and say request access. So you'll see there are two client ID and uh, you know secrets will be done. We'll copy these two. Okay, so and then we'll add it to the here. So copy it client ID and I'll copy client secret, okay? And now we try to access this API. Now see, with this credentials, you are able to access the books API. If you, if you, if you miss to pass anything, you won't be able to access this API, okay? See, authentication denied. Once you check this, then only you'll be able to access this, okay? Yeah, so, you know, let me jump, so I will go back again. So what we have covered as part of this session is, the capabilities of our new soft, okay? So we need to create trial account on any point platform. And then once you create that account, you'll log into this uh, any point platform account. And then you'll see all the, let me click on here, so you'll be a bit more clear picture. So this is the page you'll see. So we explore design center, we explore the exchange, we explore the any point studio, we explore the API manager, runtime manager. And from the access management, we have not explored that much, but in, in actual training, we'll be able to see how to control the access. Then they have added a new tool called Data Graph recently. So this is this is in backend. This is using the GraphQL. So you know it can uh, create a unified schema for your multiple APIs and club uh, multiple responses in a single response. And based on your GraphQL query, uh, you can uh, you know ask for the data. Okay. So that's all from this session. Uh Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.